the new zero navigation. So what is all the hype about? It's heading towards the last week in November 2018 and we're expecting it to be live before the end of the month. So what do we expect to see in the new Zero Navigation? Well, you can actually have a look at it and I've had a look at it already so that I can give you my thoughts on the new navigation. But if we listen to Zero, they say they have talked to business owners and they have talked to accountants. They've done a survey before they've made all these changes. And the way I see it is they have created this new navigation more to separate business users from accountants. So if you're a business owner and regular user of Zero, you're not really thinking about accounting, you're thinking about using Zero for running your business. And that's where in the menu you would go to the business section. So you're preparing sales invoices, you're preparing quotes, you're inputting bills, you're doing the day-to-day -day things running your business, not even thinking about accounts. So there's a business section for you. And then Zero have created a separate accounting section. So it might be that it's the accountants that will go here, the people that think about accounts rather than the day-to-day -day running of the business. So the reporting is here, bank accounts are here, the sort of information that accountants are going to think about more. So let's head into Zero and we'll have a quick look at the new Zero navigation. Okay, so this is the new Zero dashboard, the new Zero navigation, expected to be live late November 2018. So what's different? Well, it's obvious to begin with, it still says dashboard, but there's a few new things here. We now have a heading business and we have a heading accounting. Payroll as before, projects as before, and contacts as before. Over to the right, and there's two very subtle changes over here. There used to be an icon for files. I think it was after the plus sign. That's no longer there. There also used to be an icon for notifications that was an envelope, and that's just changed to the bell. And then heading over to the left, you might not notice, you've got the name of your organisation here, and there's a drop down. Let's just go to this drop down. So we click on it. And there's a couple of things. Well, first of all, files have been moved to here. So instead of at the top right, we now click on an organization and we've got files there. We've also got settings for this business here. So if we click on files, that just takes us into what we were used to. So let's head back, click on the drop down again, and let's look at settings. So you will notice that not all settings are here, but they've been categorised. There's two categories, general settings. So this is where you input organisation details, your users, currencies, if you've got multi-currency and connect in any apps. Then we have features on the right. So invoice settings, payment, email, payroll, zero to zero and custom contact list. There's also a question here looking for advanced settings. So that just lets you know that possibly advanced settings are somewhere else. We'll go back to that. I still say to people, if you get lost, just click on the dashboard. So those are the subtle changes. Then what are the main changes everybody's talking about? Well, first of all, we now have a category on the dashboard called business. And this is where users that don't really get involved in the accounting side of things run their business. So if you're a zero user, not into accounting, but you use it on a day to day basis, I would expect this is where you're going to go. So you click on business and what's here. So on the sales side, we have invoices, quotes and sales overview. If we click on invoices, that takes you straight into the list of all your invoices. Let me just go back. Business, if we click on quotes, it's the same idea. It takes you straight into the list of all quotes in your business. Okay, business again. Third option, if you click on sales overview, this takes you into where it used to take you when you went to accounts and sales. So it's an overview and if you wanted all your sales invoices, then you would select see all. If you wanted all your quotes down at the bottom, you would select see all. So this screen, bear with me, go back to the dashboard, is the same screen as you get to if you click on invoices owed to you. 
So that is sales overview. Okay, back to business. First three are sales. It's no surprise that the next three are purchases. So bills to pay takes you straight into your list of all bills. And if you wanted a new bill, you would just select from here. Again, we'll go back, business and purchase orders. You're not going to be surprised. It takes you into the list of all purchase orders in your business. And the third purchases option is the purchases overview. So same idea, if we go back to the dashboard, the purchases overview is where you would have got to previously if you went to bills you need to pay. So if you're creating something new, you can go to business, you can go to invoices, and then you would create a new sales invoice. As before, if you want the quick shortcut, you can go straight to the plus, and then you can select invoice. And also you can go down to the invoices owed to you and choose from there. So the option that has changed, previously you would have gone to accounts, sales, and then you invoice. Here you're now going to business. So that's the first six options in business. And then further two, we've got expense claims. And this is the new module of expense claims that you actually have to pay for. So the final option under business, products and services. Now this used to be called inventory. It's now products and services in your business. So that is the business menu. Sales, invoices, quotes and sales overview, purchases, bills, purchase orders and purchases overview. And then the final two, expense claims and the products and services in your business. Then the next new section is accounting. So this is where the people interested in the accounting side of the business, if you like, will go. So if you want to work on setting up bank accounts, you would go here. If you want reports, you go to the next option. And if you want advanced options, you would choose the third. Further down are your favorites. So we've got reports and then we've got our favorited reports appearing here. So and then what are the advanced accounting sections? So chart of accounts, find and recode, fixed assets and manual journals. A lot of these, well chart of accounts used to be under settings, find and recode, I'm struggling to remember here, but I know used to be under advisor, manual journals used to be under advisor and fixed assets used to be under accounts. So what we're saying now, if you are involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business, you're probably not going to look at chart of accounts, find and recode fixed assets or manual journals. So let's go to reports from this menu and it takes you into the list of all reports. Again, as we've said, you can favorite them. So if aged receivables is a favorite, you want that star to be blue. So when you go to accounting, the reports section, that's why aged receivables is here. Let's click on the advanced. And there's two sections in here, advanced features. And these three, we have yellow stars this time, but these three are our favorites, which is why they appear. What else do we have on here? Things that you're not gonna use on a regular basis, assurance dashboard, export and data, and history and notes. Advanced features, that's on the left. On the right, we have advanced settings. So financial settings, you're very rarely going to go here. So that's why they're under advanced. Chart of accounts is here. It's got a star because it's a favorite and we will possibly go to that more regularly than the other items here. Tax rates, fixed asset settings, tracking categories, report codes, report fields and conversion balances. If you can't find organization settings, there's a tip here because there's a question. That's if you remember the organization settings are to the left and that's where they are there. As I've said, payroll is very similar to before. In fact, that menu is exactly the same as before. Projects, the menu is slightly shorter. It doesn't have staff. Two items relating to staff previously, it just has all projects and time entries. And contacts, that menu has not changed either. So there you have it, the new dashboard, the new navigation in Zero. I do think it's better than before. I understand what they're trying to do. But I do expect that people will maybe not be huge fans of it when they first see it. If that's the case, I have another video that you might want to watch that explains 
where to find things if you're struggling to find your way around the new zero navigation. I hope you enjoy it and I hope that you found this video helpful, showing you very briefly what it's all about. As always, if you like my videos, please let me know that you like them. And why don't you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new videos are uploaded each week. Until next time, happy zeroing. <music>